A trillion dollars was wiped out from the US stock market last Monday as DeepSeek released yet another groundbreaking AI model, this time in the image generation space called Janus Pro 7B. Hi. Hi. How are you? You have questions. Yes. I, I had a lot of questions. I'm sure you had a lot of questions, but rest assured, we're going to answer them right now. And I'm going to explain to you why Janus Pro 7B is 10% more accurate than all its competitors, including OpenAI's Dolly 3 and Stable Diffusion. Specifically with multimodal understanding, where you give an AI model an image as well as a prompt asking a question about that image, and the model outputs text as a response to your question about the image. As well as generating new images where you give a model a prompt and then it generates a new image as well as some kind of caption along with it. Here are some examples from DeepSeek's paper on multimodal understanding. You give the AI model an image as well as a prompt to describe this scene in detail. And you can, as you can see on the right, it's actually outputting text reasoning about the image. And here's another probably more useful example of multimodal understanding. You give the model an image of a sign as well as you ask it a question, what's written in this image? And then DeepSeek will actually output you the text describing the image itself, showing that it's understanding what's in it. And thirdly, here's a funny example where you give it an image of a cake as well as ask it to describe the background story of this cake. So you give it an image and a text, and then DeepSeek Janus Pro will output you back the text describing the image. And it's describing in a way to show that it's actually reasoning about what's inside the image and it's taking the most important parts and features. And here are some examples of what Janus Pro can do with text-to-image generation, the second ability it has. Each image you can see here was generated by Janus Pro and using the prompt underneath it. And while these images aren't like mid-journey level realistic, what's cool is that Janus Pro, like DeepSeek R1, is also open source and free to use. So instead of paying mid-journey, you could get some realistic looking mid-journey-like output even using Janus Pro. And now let's learn more about the architecture behind how this all works. So the way DeepSeek Janus Pro is able to do both of those image generation and multimodal understanding tasks, it uses two separate encoders. What I mean by an encoder, it's a specific type of AI model that takes in some kind of input, whether that be text or image input, and then it basically calculates a SparkNotes version of that input, where it gets the most important features as kind of like a summary, but it does so using like matrices and vectors, specifically using a multi-head attention mechanism. I'm not gonna go into detail how this meet, how this works, but it's also important to know that it's there. And it's really important to know that this is that this is how it works. For example, a well-trained encoder is able to look at this image of Wolverine and pick out specifically his probably his face and his claws as the most important, and maybe even his yellow clothing, as the most important aspects of that image that allow it to classify it as such and to be able to understand it. And having this encoder is really important so that our AI model can understand an image as well as other types of file formats like images, like text, in videos, spreadsheets, and documents. So if you compare previous models to Janus Pro, models like Dolly and Stable Diffusion, their purpose is to be able to generate new images from text, but they're not able to actually understand the images as they generate them. Whereas something like TokenFlow tries to do both, but doesn't really do both that well. Whereas Janus Pro does both very, very well. And the reason it's so hard for an AI model to do both is because fundamentally understanding and generating have two different goals in mind. To understand an image, you don't really need super small details. You just kind of need a spark notes and a high level overview of the image in order to reason about it. Because an image has so many millions of pixels, you don't have like the memory to be able to understand every detail. You just need the high level overviews. That's why in most previous AI models like CNNs, they capture like areas and neighboring regions of an image, but not the specific super small details. Whereas with generation, you do need those small details because you want to generate very realistic images with very realistic looking textures, lighting, and different shadows and other parts of an image as well. That's why it's so cool that Janus Pro 7B is able to do both.
So the way Janus Pro works is that it separates its understanding from its generation into two separate parts of the model as two separate encoders. So basically what they do is they connect the understanding and generator encoder to what I call their manager. It's another transformer that pretty much delegates the task to them. So let's say if I'm trying to generate a new image, I give Janus Pro a prompt which then feeds into the generator encoder. The generator encoder understands the important parts of the prompt and gives the manager transformer some generation tokens. It then uses those tokens and with its own weights and parameters to actually output the new image as well as a caption for the image. So it's doing text to image to text. And a small technical detail is that it also uses a decoder here to actually convert the tokens back into like an image format. Whereas on the other hand, if you're trying to understand an image, you can give the manager transformer a prompt and an image, which will then feed into the understanding encoder. So the understanding encoder is gonna analyze the prompt as well as the image. So the, on the image, it'll understand the most important parts, and again, the spark notes of it, as well as the important parts of the prompt, and then get the prompt and image understanding tokens, feed it into the manager transformer, and then use them to actually output a response to the prompt. So what Janus Pro does that other models can't do is that it separates its understanding of images and text from its ability to generate images and text, and it's delegated both from a manager. So how did DeepSeek actually train a model like this? Well, these were the three steps they used. First, they converted their images into tokenized vectors so that the model is able to mathematically work and operate with them where tokenized means we take specific portions of the image in the similar way how we take specific words from a sentence and we convert them into vectors. Then with those tokenized vectors, we use them to pre-train the model on text to image data. In general, just because our transformer models is so big, we need to be able to get them to have an idea of what text, how text is related to images in terms of like the, the characters from a text and the pixels of an image, how are they related? Then we actually do supervised fine tuning where we have data with actual labels and correct responses. So the way that DeepSeek chose to split up their, their data is if you remember, you have understanding and generation where understanding takes in images and text and outputs text. Generation takes in text and outputs images and text. So kind of like the pre-training. And they do 50% image plus text to text for multimodal understanding. 10% from tech for text to text data just so that it's able to output a correct response and do text reasoning. And then 40% from text to image to text, which is with which is with the multimodal image generator, actually just regular image, text to image generation. In addition to an optimized training strategy, the two main differences that Janus Pro does is they expanded their data set to include 90 million more examples of image to text captioning data as well as 70 more, million more examples of synthetic versions of the data. When I say synthetic, I basically mean those three data types of data sets that I talked about with like text to text, text to image to text, and image to text to text. They just use an AI model to make more examples of those. And the idea is that they wanted to make more realistic data sets with a lot of with pieces of noise in them. That way they represent the real world much better. And they also increased the model size of their Janus Pro model from 1 billion to 7 billion parameters. And this ultimately, from the graph right here, this ultimately resulted in a 10 to 20% higher accuracy just by increasing those model parameters, just by increasing the size of the model parameters like that, which I think is absolutely crazy. And this is the Janus Pro 7B model in a nutshell. Hopefully it was informative. And if you want to actually play around with the model yourself, there's a Hugging Face link in the description below with a dashboard to try out the multimodal understanding and text to image generation features of Janus Pro 7B. And if you want to learn more about DeepSeek, I actually have a video where I described DeepSeek, DeepSeek's R1 model in depth with their paper which has done pretty well, and I think you'll enjoy if you like this type of video. Thanks for watching the video, and if you want to watch more AI content, go check out some of my other videos as well.